This is 23-year-old Yardley Love. Yardley grew up in a very wealthy family. She lived in the best neighborhoods and attended expensive private schools. Family and friends would say that she always lit up every room she walked in, and she was a very humble and caring person. Yardley had a passion for lacrosse, and when she attended the University of Virginia, she would join their lacrosse team named the Cavaliers. Yardley spent her days studying her textbooks and practicing lacrosse out on the field. She had a very bright future ahead of her, and when she met a member of the men's lacrosse team named George Hughley, she thought that all of her dreams were coming true. Unfortunately for her, George struggled with alcohol, jealousy, and rage, and he did not like being told no. Let's kind of start, I'm going to kind of ask you some questions, and like I said, we'll explain things a little bit later. Um, tell me about your day yesterday. Play golf with um, our parents. It was a, I went to dinner with my dad and my two buddies. Where was that? Where did I went to see now. Okay. Um, and then uh, went home, went to the bar for like a little while. And right, what time did you go out to eat? The golf event had to ended at five ish, so we were probably back at. That was probably seven thirty with dinner. Okay. And uh, then went home. I drank a few beers. Went like had um I went to the bar for a little while. I went to boil Which bar? boil heights. Well, okay. Um. Just like Yardley. George grew up in a life of privilege. Even as a child, he had the best of everything. He played football in high school, then joined the men's lacrosse team at the University of Virginia. From first impression, George seemed to be the all-American jock type who had a very bright future ahead of him. He would meet Yardley during their freshman year, and for the next couple years, they would become inseparable. She was already like, oh, like freaking out. Like, you know, you can't go me, you can't go me. And I was like, I'm like just trying to talk to you. And like, she like started being like, like getting like all like, you know, like really like defensive against it because the week before she came into my apartment and like attacked, like and started striking me. And I like was like, all right, you gotta leave. And like had my roommate's girlfriend finally be like, all right, you like take her out of there because of this. So when I, when I went in to talk to her, cause we literally, she, they'd been away, we'd been away. When I talked to her, she was already like on the defensive edge. And like, I was like, listen, I'm not here to like, I'm just here to talk to you. And she like got all like, like sat up, her bed's against the wall. Like if it was in this corner, she was like up against the wall and I was like, like we were sitting there talking and like she started being like, like, you know, like getting like all like aggressive after this. And so I was like, all right, like chill out, like and shook her a little bit. And she started being like, like freaking out. And I was like, listen, I'm not like here to do anything. I'm here to talk to you about everything that's ensued in the past week and and she was like and like sort of like being like no 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 like like hitting her head like st like stop like like she's in the corner i was sitting on the bed i was like stop like and i was like we were like what the hell like we were just gonna talk and like it was not at all like a good conversation because that's like she was already like freaking out with just even seeing me just even seeing me there. George struggled with alcohol addiction. When he would drink, he would become extremely angry and aggressive. He had been arrested once for underage possession of alcohol and once for a public drunk and disorderly. George was also a very jealous boyfriend. During one occasion, a fellow lacrosse player walked Yardley home from a bar to make sure she arrived safe and sound. When George found out, he assaulted him and told him to never do that again. Okay. What happened next? What happened next? And she was, just kept hitting her head against the against the wall while she was sitting on the bed. And I was like, I grabbed her and I like shook her. I was like, stop! Like we need to like and looked at her. I was like, we need to like talk about this. And like, I mean, I was on holding her arms and stuff, but like I I never struck her. I never like hit her 
hit her like in the face or anything. I was just like, we need to talk. And she was so like, she was so like, oh, I mean, what's the word? Like, you know, like, like flopping a fish out of the water. Like, like so like, like all this, all because of what happened last week. And I was like, listen, like, I'm not here to like, fight with you or like do anything like here to talk to you and like and she's like no 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 like get away from me uh, all this like and being and like and like that's what happened like I left like she was in her bed I think her nose was bleeding a little bit but she was in her like when I left she was like still in her bed like and then the, actually she may have at one point she got on the floor and we were, and we were talking uh, we were like, and she was still like fighting. Actually, no, she went over to her desk, to where the desk is, and she was like, you have to leave, 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 like all this stuff. And I was like, all right, like fine, like, but like, I want to talk to you after all this. And, and like, I was, I was like a little bit persistent because of the situation, you know, my former girlfriend who, something happened last week, you know, and I was like, all right, like, well, so we were like talking over there and. George's behavior would begin to affect his relationship with Yardley. A once happy and carefree relationship began to turn very toxic. The couple would argue constantly about the most trivial things. These arguments would escalate quickly and George would begin to physically assault Yardley during these fights. Another lacrosse player would testify that one day he heard Yardley yelling for someone to help her. After hearing her cries, he would find her with George's hands firmly around her throat. Yardley's mother would beg her to leave George and file a restraining order, but she would not listen. She knew that George only acted this way when he was drinking, so she stayed, hoping that one day he would become sober. I mean, I, somehow we ended up, somehow I was resting her on the floor and I was just like, stop, I just like, and I was holding her, but I was never, I never struck her or anything. And I think that's might've been when her nose started to bleed actually, it was when I was holding her on the floor, being like, listen, like, I'm like, you came and tagged me that. Like, I wanted to talk to her about, you know, everything because I got on the, like, whatever, like, text messages, to, like, from her and all this stuff and so that's when I was like holding her but not so like not like forcefully and then and then you know she, then I guess that's when her nose might have started to bleed was when like it, it like it like rolled like that like her face on the ground and her nose started bleeding and then let's kind of start from you you keep talking about something that happened last week what happened last week what happened With last her? week you said kind of set up the it kind of, well, yeah, I was, that's why I was going over there to talk to her. Well, yeah, what happened what last happened week? What happened last week? Let's start there. Last week? Mm -hmm. It was May 2nd of 2010, and George's lacrosse team had made it into the championship round. George spent the entire day drinking heavily to celebrate their victory, and he continued drinking late into the night. Yardley had spent the day drinking as well and socializing with friends, and she decided to call it a day and wanted to go to bed. Her roommates wanted to continue drinking late into the night, so they left Yardley alone so she could sleep. Around 11.15 that night, George walked over to her apartment because he wanted to talk to her. After he arrived, neighbors would say that they heard yelling, banging, and then nothing. Start with that last week. Sorry, Did y'all break week. up last week? We broke up like a month ago, but it had been like talking and like, you know, hanging out and stuff. What'd you break up for? And because we broke up because she wanted to, but like was because she wasn't really sure about all this because we we're both like graduating, you know, and she wants to move to New York and I want to move like to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, we don't really know. And she was like, you know, sort of un unsure about all of this. So we broke, so she was like, sort of like broke it off like slightly over like, you know, a period of time, like, hard well like we shouldn't hang out anymore da, da, da. but we're still hanging out and everything and then call them a week ago she goes down to she went down to Carolina and like 
I don't know what happened there, but she told me what happened, which was like, which was that Wednesday night. She sends me text message like, oh, I'm so glad, like I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm so glad like I fucked so-and-so, you know? And so I didn't even respond to that. I was like, whatever. Like, she said you know, she fucked somebody? Is that what you just said? Hooked up, fucked, like same, okay. same thing. So I didn't even respond to that. Those were like text messages. Yardley's roommates would arrive home a few hours later and they would find her unresponsive in her room. They called 911 and reported that they believed Yardley had an alcohol overdose. The police would arrive and examine the body. They found serious injuries that included large bruising around the right side of the face and an eye that was swollen shut. It wouldn't take the police very long to name George as a suspect, and he would be brought in for questioning. And she walks in the door, opens the door, and comes over and just starts hitting me in the face. And I like got up and I was like, stop, like, like you know, like get off of me, like leave me alone, like like, you, you can't, like, do this. You can't just, like, start doing this. Like, and then I had to get my roommate's girlfriend who is friends with my girlfriend. I was like, yo, Liz, like, calling from her from the kitchen. Like, get her out of here. Like, never, like, touched her, never struck her. I was just like, listen, like, you have to, like, stop hitting me. And she wouldn't stop me. She kept calling and kept calling so that happened. So I was going over there to talk to her last night on Sunday, and like, and that was the reason why I was going over there to talk to her. And I never like hit her, never struck her, never, and nothing happened. All right, all right. George has confessed to going to Yardley's the night before, but only to talk and nothing more. He has also explained why he went over there by saying that Yardley had entered his apartment and attacked him and he wanted to talk to her about it. George doesn't know that Yardley is dead, and the detective has no intention of telling him just yet. She needs more information explaining exactly what he did while he was there. So you go over there, knock on the door. Her front door was open, mm -hmm. her room door was closed, I knock like, like, are they like, she heard me open the door and, and went in. All right, went in where? To her room. All right, straight to her bedroom? Straight to her bedroom, yeah, I mean. How'd you get through the door? Her door or the mm -hmm. front door? Her door. Actually, it might have been locked. Mm hmm It was. Yeah, it might, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Just, just sure. be honest with you. Yeah, no, yeah, it was, actually, it was locked, yeah. Because yeah. I think I put a hole. Yeah, you punched door. a hole through the door? Pretty sure, actually, now. Yeah, yeah. Now you used to have that, yeah. Right. What, sure. Why'd you do that? Because I won't talk to her because mm -hmm. she's been sending me like emails. Was she like, telling you to leave emails. or? She well, I, I you guess, or yeah, when I, once I was in her room, she was like very like, you know, like, or like, blah, 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 like I don't want to talk to you, like all this stuff. The crime scene shows that someone had forced their way into Yardley's room and then assaulted her, but there is no evidence that George was the one who did it at least until now. The detective asks George how did he get into the room if the door was locked, and George explains that he forced his way into the room. This confession makes George their prime suspect. They ask George a question that confirms he was in Yardley's room the night before. Like, you know, the, what was she wearing? She was, what was she wearing? She, I think she, she was in her bed. She was in her underwear and t-shirt. Okay. Okay. All right, so I you, you get in there, she's in there. Okay, I I, 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 okay like, I'm not saying you do that. I'm just trying to pick yeah, her no, up. Yeah, I understand, okay. but like... All right, so she's in her bed, t-shirt, and underwear, you think? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Light on, light off? Light off. I'm pretty sure she was like... This was like around... Probably, I want to say like 1245-ish. Okay. So she was like probably... She was like either asleep or like, you know, to it something. And so I went in there to talk to her. And... And she was very, like, you know, very on edge, like, I don't want to talk, like, I don't want to talk, like, uh, you know? Okay. I was like, listen, like, you, what you pulled last week was outrageous, like, I just want to talk to you. And Why'd you push the door, though? Because 
because I wouldn't talk to her. They ask George why he broke through the door to get into the room, and George's response is almost comical. He says the reason that he went into Yardley's home after midnight and broke down her door, even though she told him to leave, was because he wanted to talk to her. George lived a life where he got everything he wanted, and he was never told no. He justifies breaking into the home by saying that it was because he wanted something. All right, we'll continue on. That's fine, continue on. So you're, you're talking to her and she doesn't want to talk to you? Not really. I mean, and, I mean we talk, though. We, like, there was parts where we were talking and then, like... Do you know what you're talking about? I mean, about so many different things. Okay. Like what? Like, like what she did last week. Mm-hmm. Like, went to, like, Carolina, how she attacked me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 like, f like she went to Carolina and hooked up with someone Sunday when we were still trying to figure out things, came over, attacked me on Tuesday, okay. you know, and I'm just sitting, like, and I was over there, like, like, to talk, like, I was like, this is, like, this is outrageous, like, I mean, and because I was trying to make everything better, and, and then, like, you know, and then all of this happens, and then she comes in and attacks me, and I'm like, and to the point where my my roommate's girlfriend has to like take her out of there. Okay. So, Let us go back to you in her room tonight. Yeah, last night. Last yeah, night. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so so she's like in the corner if her bed's like if her bed would push all the way back like in the corner like you know like and she and I I'm pretty sure that she. She was very defensive because she knew, like, how upset I was because I've told her, like, through emails, like, how upset I was, like, about what she did and about Tuesday night of her, like, coming in and starting to strike me. And so I was like, and I sat on the edge of bed. I was like, listen, like, I want to talk to you. Like, like what you did was bullshit. Like, that was, that's not, like, okay. Like, so you're pretty upset, pretty angry. Um, yeah, I, was, I mean, I was, I, I was more, like, emotional than I would say angry. Okay. You're hurting. And I was just like, I, like, and, and she's like, uh, like, not like, like, you know, she's like, uh, like, you know, sort of pushing everything that she did to the back burner and, like, talking about, like, like, you know, like, like trying to, like, put everything that she did, like, wasn't important and and like you know we talked and she like kept getting like and then she kept saying things like oh well like you know like i mean what do, she was saying stuff like oh well, like, i don't trust you like or stuff like that and i was and like and it got it kept going to the point where she like I was like, listen, like you're like we have to figure like out what's going on. And she was like, I'm not I don't want to talk I'm not talking to you and then she like pushed me, like, get out of here. Like like go. And I was like, no, and like I was like be like, we have to talk, like so, like get like when, when you when you're doing that, what what are you holding on her? George explains after everything that had happened between him and Yardley, all he wanted to do was talk to her. He goes on to say that for some reason after he broke into her apartment at 1245 in the morning, she did not want to talk to him. He says it like there was something wrong with Yardley for not wanting to speak with him because he wanted to talk to her and he usually gets what he wants. While George explains this, he uses arm gestures that the detective sees and she begins asking questions about it. On her arms. On her arms, like maybe up here? Like shoulders, yeah. Shoulders. Like, 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 like okay. yeah, like, like. Never like strut. Never like you know. I mean, if I could like show you, I'd, no, it's all right. I know, Just I know. But like, up and, like, up her arms. Like, come on, like you know. And see, that's when she was like wiggle and like, like get away and like you know like hide in the get in the corner like really like aggressive like defensively almost. And then we like wrestle the ball on the ground the same way. Her nose started bleeding. And and then I was and then she ended. I think she was back in bed, and I was and I left. So I was like, oh, "This is the, not going anywhere." How did she get back in bed? Ah, uh, we were like wrestling, and we stood up, and I I tossed her, I pushed her onto the bed. I was like, "Go to bed." Like, I'll talk to you later. I put, I, yeah, I'm like, 
we didn't like throw her, but like mm-hmm. we were like standing up at this point after we were wrestling on the ground. She had like a bloody nose. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Did go, you, to, um, go to bed. Okay. And you kind of tossed her on the bed and you left? Yeah. Okay. Did um did you go back and check on her at any point? No, I did not. Okay. Did you uh, uh, did you touch her neck area at all? Did you choke her at one point? The detective needs to gather as much evidence as possible to prove that George's actions were the direct cause of Yardley's death. George still has no idea Yardley is dead, and he believes he is there on a domestic violence charge. If he did know, there is a good chance he would have asked for a lawyer. The detective will now ask more questions to help explain all of Yardley's injuries. Um, I may have grabbed her a little bit by the neck mm-hmm. when we were like, but I never like strangled her. Okay. Um, okay. but I, yeah, I mean, during the whole like commotion, you know, like I we may have, I might have grabbed her neck, but I never was, I never was like strangling her. Okay. All right. All right. Um. I'm going to go check on something really quick. Did when, when you left her apartment, did you take anything with you? No. Nothing at all? Her bed. All right. All right. Because um, I, I think we're not, her, her laptop is missing, I guess. Did you grab it for any reason? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. You did? Okay. Is it at your apartment? Yeah, okay. somewhere in my apartment. I can okay. give it to her. Why'd you grab her laptop? Because I was so pissed that she wouldn't talk to me. I was like, I don't know. I like took it almost as like collateral, I guess. I don't know. It's it's not reasonable logic, but right. Okay. I don't know. Did you take anything else besides no, the laptop? No. Nothing. No. Okay. I mean. All right. So when um. The detective asks George if he took anything from the apartment, and he says no, as if he actually believes he did not take anything. He is then reminded about a laptop, and he immediately admits to taking it. This shows that George was very intoxicated, to the point where he does not remember certain things about the interaction. With that in mind, the detective continues asking questions, doing her best to jog his memory. When you left out of there, I mean, you saw that she was bleeding on her nose. Did, mm-hmm. did you try to call rescue or anything to make sure she was all right? No, I did not. No. Why? Uh, I didn't think it was like, in, I didn't think that she was like in need of like going to the emergency room. I, she just got, I mean, a blood. Why do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I, I did, did you say when you were... And correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, when you were shaking her, her head was hitting the wall? Well, that was in the beginning, that was in, initially when I walked in, like, she was, like, up in the corner, like, just, like, get, like, get out of here, like, you know, like this. Mm-hmm. Like, at, at any time when you were shaking her, did her head bang the, the wall? Did, did you, like, I mean, shake her into the wall? I know you already said you didn't punch her and stuff. And, no, and I mean, I wasn't, like, like throwing her into the wall. Like, I mean, we were sitting on her bed, which is against the wall, and I was mm-hmm. like, like, and I was like, like, you're, like, and, like, I mean, maybe, like, I wasn't hitting her against the wall, but, like, when she's, uh, like, sitting there in the corner mm-hmm. of, like, if it were, like, or, like, like this, and I'm like, you're, like, you know, and I, I was like, 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 what the fuck was that about? Like, that, that's such bullshit that you, like, do that. Like, you know, I mean, possibly. I was like, you know, that, that's such a, like, bullshit move. Like, what, what, what like, you know, like, ever like, he never, like, what are you, like, doing? Like, like that, like. Okay. She, she has a pretty good knot on her head. That's why I'm asking how uh, that, how, how you can explain how that would have happened. I mean, I don't even know when that, a knot. Mm-hmm. I mean, like on, on the side of her head, she's been hit pretty good right there. So I'm just trying to figure out, did you hit her with something? No. Was that no, her I never, I never, never touched her or struck her or anything. Well, you touched her. You had your hands on you know, her. I, yeah, no, I, I said never struck her. Okay. Never, never, never at all. Like. Well, I'm, I'm trying I'm to just, figure I'm out why, to why she's got why. a black eye and why she's got a big lump right there. I mean, we... I don't know. Is that how what you're saying? You, you've never I, yeah, I don't know how. With anything. So she's got them. So, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, All right. No, no, no. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. 
All right. Um, so you, you I'm, I'm gonna go through this one more time, make sure we're on the same page. So you're, you're pretty pissed at her from a week ago for sending you text messages. Do you have those text messages where she says she, uh, as you put it, fucked somebody? I actually might have those, yeah. All right, you got your phone with you? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's pull it out and scroll through it. Let's see if we can see those. Motive is very important in these types of cases. Establishing a reason why a person commits a crime is a key piece of evidence. The detective asks George if he still has the text messages on his phone from Yardley, where she tells him she had sex with another man. George begins to pull out his phone, and the detective immediately moves her chair next to his, so that way he cannot delete anything on his phone. Yes. We didn't say they were, they were like, I guess what you call like a, one of these, which is like a, an ongoing conversation, an ongoing like instant message and it's gone. Okay. I don't need that one. They don't leave that right in front of me. All right. Um, I mean, I've been showing you emails that say she hooked up with someone. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm not okay. lying about Did that. Do you have a home computer, laptop? Yeah. Okay. Like Is that where all the emails are? I mean, does can you get to them on that? Uh, actually, I th they're deleted off here. I can get to them though. Okay. All right. That's 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 fine right now. Um. So last week. Y'all kind of broke up a while back. It's kind of been, you're still been yeah, talking. Yeah, last week, she gets pissed, you get pissed because she sends you a text. So last night, you go over there wanting to talk. Let's talk about how you, you entered. entered. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Because to put your, to have put your fist through the door. No, I, she it's actually my leg, I'm pretty sure. Your leg? Because that's why my legs like this. Yeah, you're right. No, with your leg. Yeah. How'd you get all the bruising on your hand then? This is all from the cross. This is all. That's this, pretty fresh right there, looks. This is all from my lacrosse game on Saturday. On I Saturday. Mean, I my arm, you can see where my arm pads are. Mm -hmm. Right here, my gloves right here. and that's Even right all. there, I thought you you wore those padded gloves. This is lacrosse. all. This is all the difference. This is all from lacrosse. 100%. This is where my arm pads are. And my glove mm -hmm. goes to here. This is all tanner because it's because that's where it gets sun compared okay. to where my legs like the difference in color. Mm -hmm. And okay. and that's I got whacked here. I remember 100% got whacked during the game when I was trying to end, like kill the clock. Mm -hmm. When when you had her and you're shaking, did she scratch you anywhere? No. 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 She's a little girl. She's tiny. Yeah, she did not know. She didn't. She didn't, she didn't try me. to hit you or anything like that. No. Okay. So you you kick in the door. Yeah, go in. that's so that that that's how I got her. Yeah. Okay. And then I stuck my hand through and unlocked it and went in there and okay. everything else was for you. For the next twenty minutes, the detectives talk with George about what happened that night. George tells them that he has told them everything he remembers and he continues to say that all he wanted was to talk to her. The detectives realize they will not be getting any more information from him, so they decide it's time to let him know the truth. Well, I have to tell you something. Well, I think I know why you took the computer. Why do you say? Is that all right? Go ahead. Go ahead. She's dead. You killed her, George. Dead. I think you knew that already. No, I did not. She's dead. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. Oh my god. We're not here for any reason, George. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? 
You just told us. How is she gonna? How is she gonna? I didn't strangle. I didn't do. I, I didn't fucking hit her. I don't even know, I don't. She's dead. Yes. How the fuck is she dead? Oh my God. We're serious, George. And that's why we. That's why you took the computer, isn't it? No. Because you had threats to kill her on that from a past email. Because she hooked up with a player from UNC. I never. I said that. I, I never. Like that was just like the 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 moment. The heat of the moment. Yeah. Last night. Last night was heat of the moment too, wasn't it? You went in there to talk with her, but it got out of control, right, George? The alcohol got a hold of you. You kicked in her door. She started to fight with you. You punched her in the head, or you cracked She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You She's cracked her head dead. in the window or in the, in the wall. She's not dead. She is. She's not dead. I ain't BSing you right now. It's serious. I want to see. I want to see her. George, She's not like dead. George. She is dead. You are not here to dance with us. You're you're here because she's dead. The alcohol. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's it. It's true, dude. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I did it. I didn't hurt George, her. Listen to listen to me. I didn't hurt her. Listen to me. You probably didn't mean to hurt her. I didn't hurt her. You went in there, you kicked the door, and she got a little feisty. You either punched her or you smacked her head into the concrete, and then you held her down on the pillow, because that's what no, you did. No, I didn't hit her on the pillow. I was never on the bed. Okay. Well, how I never you? held her down. I never I never suffocated. I never did anything. Okay. I, I don't believe that she's dead. How did you? How did, how I don't did, believe that she's dead. How I she, don't believe that she, she's did dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How, on, she's, there's no way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I didn't. Listen, I listen, never listen, did anything like this, me. like that she's going to be dead. Listen to me. She's not dead. Did there's, you punch her? or did No, you, I never. I never did, know. Did you hold her head into the wall? Did you crack it? When no. Did you Is her head cracked? Did you smack her head in the wall? No. She's not dead. She's not dead. You guys said she has a black eye and a, a bump on her head. She has those things. But uh, she's not. She, she, she's not dead. I didn't. I didn't. I did not. I did not. All right. Let's let's calm down. I did not like hurt her. Like she's she's not dead. Calm down, minute, George. Okay. Tell me she's not dead. Tell me okay. she's she, she's not dead. I, I want you to calm down right now. Okay. Right. I don't. I don't believe it. I, I don't know, believe I it. I don't believe it. I never did anything that would that could do that to her. Well, let's just let's calm. I down. never did anything okay. that could do that to her. I swear to God, I, I never did anything that could do that to her. I never. No, I, I don't. I, I I I refuse to believe that that she's dead because there's no way that anything that happened last night could kill her. George would be convicted of second degree murder and receive 23 years in prison. His charge was based on the fact that he did not intend to kill her, and his reaction to hearing her death was genuine shock. His lawyers tried to have the charges reduced to manslaughter, but because George acted with malice, they would remain at second-degree murder. For now, George sits in a prison waiting to be released in the year 2033. Alright. Well, just, just out of protocol, what we got to do is stand up for you. Put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Relax. Relax. You'll be alright. Tell me she's not dead. Tell me she's not dead, though. Please. Will you tell me she's not dead? Relax. Please. Will you tell me she's not dead? You know what? I wish I could tell you that, George. 22 year old. 22. And her life is done. Oh my God. Kill me. She's gonna be dead. She's gonna be dead. She's not. I can't not do anything like that. I did not do anything that could kid that could have killed her. You you are you do realize you're under arrest. I realize okay. that. Alright, we're gonna consult the Commonwealth Attorney on the proper charge, but it's gonna be related to her death. I right? make sure you understand. She's it. dead. Okay. She's my oh. Hell there's no way. Oh my god, there's no way she could be dead. There's no way. Oh my god. No way, there's no way, there's no way. She's 
you know, be dead. You're not lying to me either, are you? You're not lying. She's dead. Oh my God. I know. I know. I know. Hey, no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It did not. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. I... Then what happened? I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. I did not kill her. Did you maybe smack her head one time too hard? I never hit, no. I mean, maybe, lay maybe on the ground, no. Did you smack her head, maybe lay her on the bed so she could kind of relax? No, 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 no. Well, you didn't punch her because, you know, I don't think you would have done that. No. <laughs> no, no, no.